guys? Okay. I'm pumped to be here. So I'm going to, it wasn't planned, but I'm going to tell you a very short story and then we'll, uh, we'll dive into the topic. Um, I was sick. I'm actually sick. My voice was broken 20 minutes ago. I took drugs, Strepsil for the French, uh, to be on stage today because I couldn't miss being on stage this afternoon with you guys. Uh, we built Conto. We started Conto in 2016. And I started as an entrepreneur in 2013, which is around when La Product Conference started. It uh, started with meetups, if I'm not wrong. And uh, that's how I learned as an engineer. So I was doing product without even knowing. But uh, that's how I learned the jargon, the codes, the slang. There is a lot of slang when it comes to product. And uh, actually, I used a lot the product uh, conference materials uh, to learn how to build products. So it's very exciting for me uh, to not be a groupie, if I may say, but be on stage today, almost 10 years later. To give you a little background, uh, Fabrice gave you a few words, but uh, when we started Conto, um, we decided uh, to tackle a huge market, a huge challenge, 25 million SMEs in Europe, all right? And all of them consistently were underserved when it came to modern business banking. I don't know if you guys heard, if some of you are in FinTech, some of you uh, heard about it. In 2016, when we started the company, um, we bumped into this number, minus 13. So that's the net promoter score, so that you, you should all know what it is, I assume, um, of the banking industry back in the days. At least the number we found. Then we bumped into people who told us, no, it's minus 10, and so on and so forth. Whatever. What we knew is that you had more detractors and haters than lovers and promoters. For a service that is invented by humans to help humans. So it's supposed to help you. And so we experienced that first front as entrepreneurs. Conto is not my first company. Actually, with the same work wife, my business partner, Alexandre. You can see us here in 2013. Uh, we built the first company called Smokio, very different space, and we experienced this negative NPS as entrepreneurs. Honestly, I'm sure it rings a bell. Maybe it rings a bell if you've been around for uh, more than a few years. Uh, unresponsive customer support when you did it, when you actually need to do your admin, which is late in the day and during weekend, nobody's here. Weird processes involving a calculator to get a token to validate a transfer. This transfer is capped in amount, and you've just raised money, so it's very weird. So basically, we experienced this negative uh, net promoter score. And so uh, we wanted to deal with it, so we decided to build Conto. And the vision for Conto has been consistent over the last seven, eight years. It's always been, actually, I should have pulled the slide from back in the days, how we framed it. It's all-in-one finance app for SMEs. So what it is essentially, if you don't know about it, it's the purple part of the slide is the business account. It's our Big Mac. This is what we're known for. And the, the, the yellow part is finance tools. So it's the, 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 the layer that, uh, that uh, you need as a finance team to move money invoices, account payable, receivable, and so on and so forth. And so this is very much the what of the Conto, of the Conto journey. But what makes great companies is not only the what, and probably it's most importantly the how. And so our strategy early days, and it's been consistent, it's still in, uh, in our notion page, the culture page, and the product page, what do we need to focus on? And we had three pillars. They're still very relevant. Killer product, so in Conto language, it means super easy to use product that is exciting to use too, not only utilitarian, but also delightful, okay? Because life is short and it's better when it's good looking and nice and efficiency is actually exciting too. Um, still our support for us was along the lines of what I said before, 24 seven or close to that customer support with wait time um, uh, below three minutes and human touch when you get an answer, so you don't get transferred to someone else and so on and so forth. That was the intention. I don't say we do it consistently at scale for so many clients today. We'll talk about it in a minute, but that's very much the intention. And a clear pricing. 
And honestly, it worked. And I'm not cooking the numbers. Actually, I see a few contours in the room, and they know we don't cook the numbers. We're very obsessed with this. So 74 in NPS, this is last month's uh, average NPS. It oscillates, sometimes 72, sometimes a little more. Uh, but this is roughly consistent. And a 4.7 on Trustpilot on thousands, if not tens of thousands of reviews. So it's clearly beyond my parents and friends. So it's significant. And it's at scale. So we have now nearly half a, half a million business clients that are using uh, the platform. So how did we do it? How did we do it early days? Because we all know what takes you here won't bring you there. So how did we do early days? For our biggest discounts on 30% recycled and ultra premium laser. Okay. Okay. Okay, your phone. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Let me talk to you about a few of the other things we can offer. Namely, we know the tax season's coming up, so by April 1st, we can have you fully stocked. One. With discount prices on ink cartridges. Three. And also, any forms that you're going to need. Seven. You can custom make them. Well, I appreciate what you guys are saying, but it uh, makes more fiscal sense to go with one of the big guys. Sure. That's true. Mm -hmm. We can't compete with their prices. But let me ask you something. How important to you is customer service? Very. Please keep holding. Your call is very important to us. Mm. It's one of the big guys. Been on hold this whole time. And this is Dunder Mifflin. Dunder Mifflin Customer Service, this is Kelly. Hey, Kelly, it's Jim. Oh, my God, Jim, how are you? I wanted to tell you. Here's my card. It's got my cell number, my pager number, my home number, and my other pager number. I never take vacations, I never get sick, and I don't celebrate any major holidays. <laughs> All right, I get it. We got a deal. <clears throat> We did simple stuff right. We hustled. We created the bond with our customers, even thousands, tens of thousands, you can still do that. And we got you know, a rain of very positive comment. And most of our acquisition back in the days was NPS driven, word of mouth. Maybe you guys, some of you are on Kanto and you heard through friends and so on. At the time, we didn't have the budget to do ads everywhere. So, so that's, uh, that's how it started. And so we got a lot of them consistently. And if you zoom here, you don't have to do it, but if you zoom, it's not only about the features. Actually, it's most importantly about the how, the secret sauce, which is not so secret, actually, but the, the, the how we wanted to execute. So the problem when you scale, as I said, is that the old recipes uh, that were really unconscious because you just hustle and you, you're just obsessed by nature. It's like Iron Man. You have the, the, the inner power. Uh, they so, so, so they just don't work anymore sometimes. And you're, you'll see across the presentation, uh, I do a lot of screenshots okay, from, the, from the field, so it's no, no bullshit. And so we got tons of negative verbatims and uh, complaining about what we run away from in the first place. You know, having customers paying the overhead of our processes so getting transfers, delayed, weird calls, changing customer support agents all the time, and you become a big company without, without seeing it and without wanting it, and that's terrible. That's terrible because the customer is pissed, then the team is pissed because they're not proud anymore, and it's kind of a ne negative circle that happens, and it's very, very hard. So again, we got tons of them. And if you take that, so you face that you're not so great anymore, bummer, combined with the no mercy competition. So that's an actual ad from 10 days ago. I won't tell the, the name of the, of the company. Maybe you know it. That's, that it's not edited. It's not AI generated. So we are as nice as Conto, but four times cheaper. Boom. And it's war. It means war. <laughs> OK? And so that creates tension. That's great big tension. But we chill. And we realized, actually, that hypergrowth creates a massive amount of entropy. For so the company, we launched a little, a little less than seven years ago. Four countries, five languages, 1,500 uh, contours, more than 70 million lines of codes written, merged. That's, that's, that's big time. That's, that's a sub, subnatural. It's, it's, very, it's very hard. And so essentially, 
um, you got you to accept that because the level of inertia is very high. And so there is a way to react. So that's the contour. You like Simpsons? Yeah, you like that? Big fan. A lot of reference today. Hopefully, you're fine with that. I love it. Used to watch a lot of TV. And so, still a bit. And, uh, that's, so, so, and so you, you get the, the team, and the team gets swinged between customer complaints. Everybody freaks. They are laughing, the contours here. They, like, they, they, you see a screenshot on Slack on, oh, those guys, they're just mentioning Conto. No, that's not nice. And then you have fast thinking mode, and you start reacting without thinking. And that's human. If you do that, welcome to the club. We all do that. And so you get to, to a point that you could you know, react by asking people to work harder, to push harder. That's a word we use in startups. Okay? And you hire people, or you hire people within the company that are not the workers, the devs, the product managers, and so on, to improve the process for the team actually working, thinking that those guys are better designing those processes. But as we all know, processes don't scale. Okay? So you have this blue pill, red pill moment. Again, another reference. <laughs> this is what we do at Conto. We watch movies. And so you have red pill, blue pill moment. Either you take the blue pill, so this is exactly where Omer Simpson was before. Okay? You ask people to work harder. It's intuition-based. Yeah, if you want to run faster, we need to run faster. You know? And so you put processes because, yeah, of course, the processes create value, which is absolutely wrong. Or there is another way to look at it, which is what if customer satisfaction is not a project and a process, but a practice, a culture? a company model, a way to be, okay? It's a bit actor studio, but that's, that's the reality. When you're 1,500 companies and, and you launch a project, by the time the project is done, the company has changed. Everything changes. So you need to decentralize, essentially. And how do you decentralize your practice? So starting now, I'm going to show you a few examples on what I did wrong myself, what the team did wrong too, which is in intrinsically correlated, usually. And so I want to show you a few misconceptions and wrong ideas on uh, what could be valid early days that was not valid, that is not valid today. It's not valid. They're wrong ideas. So if you show up at the office, you think it's going to work, but it's not. That's life, at least for us. So you can challenge that. So the first misconception I want to highlight is that when you're, when you see, when you're early stage, C, C, Series A, Series B, you're less than 100, you do a whole hands, everybody listens to you, everybody shows up, and it's easy, easier, let's say. It's already really hard, don't get me wrong. And so you think at 1,500 people that customers, uh, contours, everyone thinks about customers all the time because you do, and it's absolute bullshit. Another movie here. When she shot the intruder, did you see the body? No, just a shitload of blood, and if you get run over by a train, you just... Did you see the body? I assumed she was dead. The assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. So, assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. I assume, because I'm obsessed with clients, literally, uh, I care about this omotenashi, you know, this, this, this art of serving. I really like it, you know, I really, it sparks me joy. And it's true that when you are in a big company, people have to deal with their life. You know, you arrive to the office, you have this meeting to not miss, you have this, you have that, you have that. And it becomes super easy to forget about customers. That's it. That's it. And so we had to do something. So we revamped our values. Fabrice talked about it. We revamped our values. Uh, less than a year ago, we didn't have customer focus as a value, and now it's the number one. It's just the number one, because we need to print it on walls, otherwise we forget about it. And it's very important, but we do more than that, we print it on walls. But also on day one, so actually two days ago, we had new joiners at Conto. And at 3 p.m., almost the same time, this is my slide deck, so I spent 10 minutes defining what is customer, what does it mean for us? 
And what are the leadership principles that are making it a reality? Because leadership principles are stuff you can touch in a, in a, in a more actionable way on a day-to-day, -day, during a meeting, during an alignment with another team. And so for us, it's been instrumental to bring back the customer on the field. Another misconception. I'm sure you, 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 you would agree that it's a misconception, but when, again, when you scale, it's very easy to enter a meeting and say, oh, guys, we don't go fast enough. What do we ship next? Even me, I do it, and I see myself doing it and doing it wrong. So our customers expe expect us to ship as many features as possible. Actually, they don't. So of course, you need to ship stuff, because if you don't have anything to sell, you can't sell wind. <laughs> well, you could for, for a seed round, but that's it, <laughs> you know? And so, of course, so we, we, uh, we, we get stuff done. Of course, we ship stuff. But it doesn't make any sense. The worst waste you can have, because it's, it's triple pernition. It's you, you, you build stuff, so it's a waste of money. Nobody uses so customers don't even see it. And team checks, and it's not even working, so everybody leaves. That's lose, lose, lose. And so we check what customers uh, really expect, is that they don't expect a number of stuff. They expect that what we do works. Because every time you add something that doesn't really work, it makes all the other stuff obsolete. So it just decreases the average of the whole app, and it becomes crap. So we've changed something. We're actually changing something right now, which is instead of, uh, instead of monitoring the lead time on when stuff are merged, now we're monitoring, and this is going to be very soon, the metric, the North Star metric of our product and tech team is let's monitor the time to value, okay? That's the, time, that's the one metric. We, we don't care on whether you merge quickly. What we care is how fast are we able to transform cost into revenue and customer value because NPS is no negotiable, all right? Another misconception I want to highlight is uh, to think that customer satisfaction is a goal. So I kept repeating, and it might be misleading, I kept repeating that NPS is very important for us and so on and so forth. Um, it's true. But a big mistake is to think that it's an end goal, um, at least on the field. And when you're a grown, grown, grown company, you need to start using your usage and satisfaction, your success metric, uh, not as a consequence, but as an input. Because if your input is uh, to bridge Tokyo to Osaka in 10 hours, you'll get a TER train. And if you say, I need it in two hours, and I need it really within three years because this is the Olympics, well, you get the Shikansen. So the success metric is the requirement not all the way around. And it's very important to acknowledge that because when you grow a company, people start to be in fast thinking and forget on why we're here. And it's very important to contextualize those things. So you've seen this table before. It's easy to fail. So now we have this thing in, we use Notion, some people use Jira, whatever. Uh, um, we, we try to now design product for success. Not, oh, we design and let's see if it reaches success, which is very easy to go to when you're, uh, he's la you're laughing, Quentin. <laughs> Head of product at Conto, very, very good guy and talented. La fiche. Another misconception I wanna, um, I wanna highlight today is looking at data to build products. We all know that they're like usual suspect, but again, when you grow, it's so easy to forget about that, and everybody asks you for data. You're bored, the cross team, because that's a language to align, and so on. But the issue is that the average customer does not exist. It does not exist. That's terrible. I wish. It's less work, and I'm lazy. So we're going to watch this last, la not last, almost last video from someone you should know. I have a saying, when the data and the anecdotes disagree, the anecdotes are usually right. It doesn't mean you just slavishly go follow the anecdotes then, it means you go examine the data. And it's usually not that the data is being miscollected, it's usually that you're not measuring the right thing. If you have a bunch of customers complaining about something, at the same time, you know, the metric look like, why are they shouldn't be complaining? You should doubt the metrics. Yeah, he said it. 
Uh, and so, of course, I'm not against data. I love data. I'm an engineer. I'm data driven in many ways. But it's important to understand what, are, what is the purpose of data. The purpose of data is to tell you where to look at because you need to prioritize. You don't have unlimited resources. That's A. And B, to check if what you've done worked. Because we learned before that success metric is the input. So did you design according to the input correctly? Yes, no? You figure it out. However, when it's it comes to building stuff, at least at Conto, that's something we've learned. Because otherwise, you, you lose sight of customers, and you cannot build product customers love anymore, is to use anecdotes. And then the first reaction in big companies, yeah, but it's an anecdote. It's not all customers. True. But the average customer doesn't exist. And that's an issue. That's not an issue. That's a reality. And so, thank God we have some guy called Pareto. I'm sure you heard about this person. But no, you haven't? He, he said 80-20 should ring a bell. So if you do a lot of anecdotes, eventually you'll get 80% done. That's cool. So that's how, at least for us, being customer-obsessed and building customer, uh, products customer love is focusing on anecdotes when you build stuff rather than data. That's what it means for us. That's another one. So the, you remember Homer Simpson? You panic. You freak out. So what do we do first? You parallelize, of course. Because intuition tells you, oh, you're going to go faster. You're going to game the parallelization of things. The problem is that multitasking leads to longer lead time. That's it. It's, it's a law of physics. It's not even, it's not even me. So we're going to watch a video. That's the last one. And hopefully, you believe the video more than me. So on the, there is no sound. So on the left, you have batching. So imagine the person is doing a bit of each spec every day, a bit of 10 specs every day. And on the right is, I do one spec, done, 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 but end to end. So when you do 99% of 100 projects, the monetary value of it and user value of it is zero. Okay, It's not shipped. It's not done. It's not delivered. Okay, When you actually do one thing and two ends, and another one and another one, you generate customer value and money faster, and also team satisfaction, because you score more points more frequently. And that's cool. Okay, So what we've done is that we've we strongly encourage uh, the team to work what we call one piece flow. It means one piece flow, one piece at a time. Uh, and so this is a screenshot again from, uh, from the field. The last one, and then we're going to wrap up. You're still with me? All good? OK, I'll, tr I'll do my best. So. <laughs> Uh, customers are expecting mostly new things. You heard about this one? So that's not really true. Y you like pizza? Do you like pizza? When you go to pizza place, do you want a really good pizza or do you want pasta? You want a good pizza. And so customers, if you sell them pizza, they just want a great pizza. And we forget about it because we like to accumulate stuff over and over. And it doesn't really work. It could work. I'm not saying don't ship a lot of stuff, don't innovate, don't ship novelty. I'm just saying the answer is gray. It's not black or white. But when you scale, you forget clients, and your reaction mode is, oh, we need more, when actually customers tell you they want better. And so um, you, you, this is exactly what happens. So, at Conto, we had this check. So this is the average lead time to process a, che a check. It's a thing in France. Still, if, you, if you're French, it's still a thing here. Uh, so it's a sheet of paper for money. Yeah. And, um, and so customers complain. And it, it was actually a few points of NPS. It's not like, oh, I want a new feature. It's just your check stuff sucks. That was, that was the, the thing. And so, we have this thing now at Conto. Actually, it's been around for a long time. This is uh, what we call Kaizen. It comes from lean management. Kaizen essentially and literally means change for better. And people think it's a process. 
But it's not a process. It's the activity of getting better. So it's an activity. It's a practice. It's not a process like, oh, I do Kaizen. No, I do Kaizen activities. This is what it is. And this is what we encourage the team to do. And so there are two ops guys, actually, not even product here, I think. Yeah, I'm sure. And um, they just divided the lead time by two. Boom. And you know what happened? So we have a copilot bot at Conto from a really cool French tech company called Dust. And do you know what the bot tells us about check now? We, we made it crash it. We crashed it. You couldn't find an entry on a complaint on check anymore. And so this is what it says. The query returned no result. Woo. And so it was really cool. It's so comforting. But it's not with a new thing. It's by just making sure we are very far in our art to getting things done right. I don't know if you guys remember on my value slide, I talked about customer focus. Another value at Conto is mastery. This is what I'm talking about. So guys, a lot of things today. Hopefully you're still with me. Three minutes left, so let's wrap up. Today, we've seen, I showed you screenshots, but I showed you behaviors and models, mental models, way to think about stuff, not templates to fulfill. All right? And so when I tell you about our value on customer focus, it serves a purpose, which is a behavior towards customer satisfaction. When I tell you about leadership principles, it serves a purpose, which is towards creating a company in which the culture is practicing customer satisfaction. When I talk to you about daily so uh, problem solving, when I talk to you about what we call Red Bean, which is looking at real customer cases, anecdotes for real, when I tell you working one piece flow, it's about optimizing for speed, but what do customers want? They want quality and speed. Yeah? So it's not like, as one of the co-founders of the company, I just want that. It's just if you want to be customer-centric and build products customers really love and create a bond with your product, with your customers, well, you need to be able, at least for Conto, to link that with everyday practice, consciously. And so this is how we've put together this consciously. We call it the Conto way. It's a bit fancy-pancy. But, you know, it's just everything I told you about. And God is people satisfaction, as you can see in the roof, on the roof here. So this is the most important and all the jargon which I walk you through today. So, guys, that's the last one. We will start failing the day we stop practicing customer focus habits daily. Actually... I should edit this slide, it's not we, it's I. Because as we know, and this is the responsibility I learned the hard way at Conto, that I'm sure you're aware of, but I prefer to repeat it and acknowledge it, and that it also depends a lot on the responsibility we have as founders to show that we show up every day, we look at customers every day, we talk about customers every day, and we remind the team why one piece flow is important, not for the boss, but for you to be great at building product customers love. Thank you, guys. If you want to learn more, it's here. Thank you.